Welcome back to Metal Magic. Today, I want to show you how to cut a square hole in an instrument panel. One of the things that we have to do a lot in today's experimental airplanes is cut square holes. Uh, that's basically because almost everybody is building with electronic instrumentation, which isn't round. So the traditional instrument panel being cut with round holes of two and a quarter inch or three and an eighths um, isn't so prevalent anymore. What you do need to know is how to build a nice square hole so that you can fit that nice expensive instrument in your panel. So what we have here is a piece of panel and I've pre-marked for a three inch by three inch square hole. Now, this is gonna be a square hole that's gonna have round corners because we don't wanna have stress relief. If you have to go all the way to an actual square corner, you do that with a file. We can show you how to do that if you need to. First thing we're gonna do, we punch things and we're going to uh, drill a couple of holes, just pilot holes. Then we'll use a step drill to upsize those so we have our corners set. Now those holes aren't randomly placed. We're gonna use a step drill to drill up to a quarter inch, so we'll have a, a eighth inch radius for our corners, which means I measured the location of those holes to be right at an eighth of an inch. Make sure you do that because if you start just randomly drilling, you're gonna end up with your corner hole off a ways, and then you're gonna end up with a, a parallelogram instead of a, or a, or a trapezoid instead of a square. So we'll go ahead and put this in our, our drill motor. We'll put our hearing protection on and we're gonna up drill those, carefully steering to make sure we don't go over the edge of our line. Now you'll notice as I was drilling those, I did not mark the step drill for my destination. What I'd done is I had counted how many spots it was gonna go up, and in this case it was five, so I knew that when it went click, 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 I was in the right spot. I was also watching my lines to make sure that I was hitting the radius right on the edge of those lines. So you can do it either way, it was the quick way, but you wanna make sure that your hole is properly positioned so it doesn't go outside of the lines. So now you're asking, how do we cut the straight lines? Well, there's a couple ways to do that. One way that a lot of people used to use was to punch a whole bunch of holes and then connect them with a file. That works, it is tedious. Another way, which we'll demonstrate today, is to use a Dremel tool with a cutoff disc, cutoff wheel. That works pretty well. You're gonna to wanna to go a little inside so that you can then file to the outside to the line. Another way, believe it or not, is to use a good old fashioned jigsaw. Uh, it sounds crude, it seems crude, it works extremely well. Cut just a little bit inside the line and you'll be okay. Uh, file to the outside. Make sure that the piece of work is well supported if you do that. One more thing, if you're gonna use a jigsaw, cover the piece with something like blue painter's tape or duct tape because the jigsaw can really scratch up the surface as it jiggles its way across the surface. Okay, we're gonna start cutting. We're gonna use the Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and uh, put on our safety glasses because there's a lot of cutting here.
So that's the first line, and you'll see that we cut just inside the blue line because we're expecting to do a little bit of work with a file to clean this up. One of the tricks is to make sure that when you get close to your edge, you don't go too fast and come across and nick the other side. It's probably going to be covered by the bezel of your instrument anyways, but if you're trying to do a good job, let's try to do a good job. Okay, we're going to cut the last side and you want to make sure that the piece doesn't jump when you finish. Now we have the opening. It's still not terribly square, so we're going to go ahead and get some files to clean this up. All right, we've got our basic square hole. Now we're going to put it in a vise. And if you're using aluminum work, let's use a steel vise because then we know what's going to give first. And now we can file right down to the edge of the vise. And you can start seeing that I'm, I'm making a little bit of marks on the vise surface itself, so that means I'm getting down there flush, and that'll work out just fine. So we have a nice straight edge in that piece. You do the same thing three more times, and you have a perfect square hole. Now, one of the problems you're gonna run into when you're doing what I'm doing is that one hole, or one side of the hole, is really easy to put in the vise. The others, not so much. For instance, you can't put this in the vise and line it up flat there. The vise isn't deep enough. You can't do this because this flange is in the way. Same thing with that side. So you can fix that. Find a little piece of steel bar stock, something steel. This is just some steel strapping that I had laying in the scrap bin. And a couple of C-clamps. And make a nice steel edge like that. So we'll clamp this in place. right on our line, nice and tight. And the same thing on this side. And now we can do the exact same thing with the file and clean that up. Now, there is a quicker way. Let me get one more tool. What we have here is an angle grinder or with a an adapter for a sand sandpaper wheel. This is a pretty aggressive way to, uh, to take material off, and I find that it works really well if you just control it a little bit. So, earring protection is important. This is an air tool. Be real careful when you get near the corners because it's easy to dig into the corner with the edge of the tool. You may want to work from both sides. And then we're going to finish it with a file. We're almost done. We've got all four edges nicely cleaned up with a steel backing plate. The only thing we have left to do is deburr it. For that, we're gonna go ahead and use, take the, uh, the sanding disc off and put on a Scotch-Brite wheel, which is a fairly soft one. The blue is fairly soft. Okay, that's a nice smooth surface on the back. We're gonna flip it over. We're gonna do the same thing to the front. And yes, you're gonna get a little bit of sanding on that front, but this is a very non-aggressive Scotch-Brite and it's gonna just do a nice job and then you're gonna paint the panel anyway, so you'll scuff it more than this will. 
And there you have it, a square hole. Thanks to Aircraft Spruce for sponsoring this series, and thanks to you for watching. Don't tell Paul, but we're going to substitute his iPad. <laughs>